Office Talking MMA, and we're here with Diego Sanchez. You know him as, you, I mean, you've been called everything, you know, like a... The, nightmare to the, the, nightmare dream. the dream. Now at 33 years old, I really like to just go with the mature Diego Sanchez. Okay, you heard it from him, Diego Sanchez, and of course, UFC fighter, and you are going to change your weight class to this next fight, UFC Fight Night 78, Ricardo Lamas uh, in Mexico, instead of... Uh, the, the 155, you're going to be 145, you'll be a featherweight. And uh, how hard has that been getting ready for that? It's been extremely challenging. One of the most hardest, toughest things that I've had to do in my life. And it's just, it's a high level of discipline and a high level of sacrifice. But with that discipline and that sacrifice comes great reward with me being taller, me being longer, me being bigger and stronger in the division, and um, you know, it's just, you know, I got a hungry stomach, yeah. but uh, but but uh, but I'm hungry here in the heart. I'm hungry here in the mind, yeah. and it's gonna be a good fight for me. And and I fight the number four guy in the world, so I'm right back to the top of the division. So with him being a contender and trying to get the belt, uh, will we, a victory like does wonders for you because. Here he is, number four, and he's in line trying to fight for that the, the title. You you would probably move up even faster. I mean, with your notoriety and everything like that, if you have a really big night, they probably look. Hey, let's look at this. Yes, a dominating performance over this guy will definitely put me in the number three, four. You know, number yeah. three, number four, number two. Set me up for a big fight that would put me in contendership. How do you, do you get excited when you think about that? Because, I mean, that's what you're doing. You know, you know my, my dream is to, to be the UFC world champion. That is my dream. But, you know, all in all, I love to give the fighters and, yeah. you know, I love to give the fans and, and even all the fighters. I like to give everybody just those great fights that say, you know what? This guy's a warrior. You know, like, mm -hmm. this guy's... You know, this guy's not just an athlete. This guy's not just a fighter. This guy's a warrior, and I'm I'm going in there, and and I want to go to battle. Um, you you talked about cutting the weight and stuff like that. I know personally, if I was doing that, I mean, you, I have respect for you guys to cut that weight and and be able to do all that. And wrestling is always tough to cut weight, but in Mexico, man, there's food everywhere. New Mexico, you're in New Mexico, man. You're out. Oh, you know? yeah. The good food is all over the place, man. How yeah, there's man? there's good food, and um, it's really become a real lifestyle for me to eat healthy and be in prime optimal shape you know for the rest of my career I, it's something that i have to do and me going down to 145 and fighting at 145 puts me in a position where there's no option i have to be at my best at my healthiest and um, at my cleanest with my nutrition and my diet so you know all in all it all works out pretty good um, New Mexico does have the best food, and, and believe me, I will um, treat myself to some good food after this big, big fight, and, and um, I have Thanksgiving to come home to, and, 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 and Christmas after that, but believe me, I'll be back on the diet, because my plans are to have a dominating victory in this fight, and then be ready to jump in if someone gets hurt because if you've watched now there's a lot of fighters being hurt yeah. and uh, there's always someone falling out of big fights yeah. so I want to be that guy that's that's ready and prepared that way I can jump in there if I'm healthy I want to fight I want to stay active as possible and you know especially coming off of this long layoff the longest layoff of my career a year and a half almost and um, I just, you know, I had back-to-back -back injuries. As long as I'm healthy, I want to stay active. I want to fight. How, how the, how's that going now? I know you was a shoulder at one time too, right? Yeah. The, the, the injuries, how are the injuries? I mean, is it like... You know what, I'm 100% right now. I feel great, I'm healthy, and um, you know, I just got to give all the glory to God for keeping me healthy and, and giving me the healing that I needed to recover from a broken collarbone a torn um, lateral collateral ligament in my right knee. And so, you know, it was, it was a rough comeback, but um, I haven't stopped training throughout everything. Even when I was injured, I'd work around my injuries, do what I could. When I had the broken collarbone, I was in the gym every single day working my legs, 
core, whatever I could do to work around it, work the mind, you know. So there's always something you could do to work around an injury, and um, and sometimes those injuries can be blessings in disguise and and make you even a better athlete or a mixed martial artist. Yeah, I agree with that. Hey, so so uh, the injuries are taken care of, and, and uh, you, when you were talking about cutting weight earlier. You haven't been this small in a long time, right? No, no. This will be uh, the lightest I've been since eighth grade. Yeah, since eighth grade. This will be the lightest I've been since eighth grade. But it'll only be for maybe, you know, about three or four hours for weigh-ins. And then after weigh-ins, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot right back up to 165, 160, around there. And which is even at 160, that's a lightweight for me. But um, I, I gotta be honest, I feel good. I feel, I feel faster, I feel healthy. And um, I feel like I'm a more versatile mixed martial artist at this weight class. And, and to be honest, if I was a boxer, and um, just to give you guys something to think about, if I was a boxer at my height and my reach, I would be a welterweight fighting at 147 pounds, which is basically what I'm going to fight at at 146. I'll be making 146 on November 20th. So, you know, if I was a boxer I, for the height and the reach, it would be proper weight class for me, one, 147 pounds. Yeah. So. You know, as a mixed martial artist, things change because, you know, you guys, got, we, we have to have a, a different type of dynamic strength to wrestle guys down and to right, right. pick them up and, and to do the grappling aspect too. But our sport has really, truly evolved to where, you know, we start on our feet and we're striking and we're hitting. And, you know, I've been in some wars, I've took some damage, and at my age, I want to stay healthy and I want to give the damage and not take the damage yeah. and that's why I've made this decision to go down to 145 so I can use my reach, I can use my distance and be a more effective mixed martial artist. So, so, you 30? 30, 33. 33. Right, okay. Um, you got, to, so, so you got this fight, you, you, you're trying to um, make your name as a featherweight. Do, when you come from such a, a big name anyway, when you go to the featherweight division, does that shake things up? I mean, is it... Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I do shake things up in the featherweight <laughs> division. As soon as I called the matchmaker up from UFC and promote, proposed the idea, Sean Shelby was like, we'll take you. We'll take you down here. Because um, from 145 down, there's a matchmaker. His name's Sean Shelby. From 155 up... There's a matchmaker, his name is Joe Silva. I've been working with Joe Silva this whole time, my whole career with UFC. Okay. So now I'm working with Sean Shelby. He's like, he got super excited. He's like, they need a character. They need a personality. They need more substance that's going to build this division. And right now, with Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendes, we, we have a real good division. And to throw me in the mix, it just makes it even better. Yeah. And it makes it more entertaining, more exciting. Yeah. And so, you know, and not only that, it's a great storyline because this will be the fourth weight division in UFC. There's only been one other fighter to do it. His name was Kenny Florian. He's retired and um, he fought in four divisions, but he did not win in four divisions. So with the win in this division, I will be the first fighter in UFC history to win in four divisions. Wow. So you're making history too. So I, making history, yes. That's a, that's a big part of me going down too. Is you know I want to do something that's going to be a part of my legacy and be able to be something that's very hard for any other fighter to do forward in the future. And this being a fight town, Albuquerque. This is Albuquerque. Is a, this is a combat town, man. You almost feel like, hey, let me go represent. Is it? <laughs> oh, let me represent my town. Let me represent my city. My team. Jackson Week Gym, we're the best in the world. We got our new facility and we're blowing up. We got Holly fighting this weekend. We got Carlos fighting for the belt. Cowboys fighting for the belt. I'm dropping to 45 looking to get that belt. We're looking to dominate the UFC, dominate mixed martial arts, and, and really, really just bring everything home to Albuquerque. We're, we're giving it everything we got. You know, we can't win every time, but we're definitely at the top of the sport, and uh, we deserve our recognition. And, and Holly, talking about Holly, uh, what, how do you see this fight? Because 
looking at it and looking at Ronda's past opponents, I don't, you know, I agree with Carlos. I had Carlos Condit here, and he was just saying, I don't think she's fought somebody this athletic as Holly. You know, how do you see the fight? You know what? I see the fight from two perspectives. I see it from a teammate and a friend of Holly, and I also see it from a fighter aspect and also a fan of Ronda because I am a fan of Ronda. I think she's an amazing athlete, and I'm 100% backing Holly on this fight. And I've trained with Holly, and I, I, I know where she's at. She's prepared. She's ready for this fight. I'll tell you one thing. I know she's in better shape than Ronda. And so if, if this fight goes into a little bit of the later rounds, uh, Holly definitely has the edge. And um, I think that Holly's speed, quickness, and something that people aren't really paying attention to is her patience because she's going to have to be very patient in the first and second round to keep the distance. Even if the fight gets boring, even if the, if the fans start booing, she's going to have to be very patient to keep her distance and stay away from Holly Holm, I mean, and stay away from Ronda Rousey because Ronda, she's a, a vicious um, animal. She's, her grappling ability is probably top-notch, second to none, including all of the fighters in, in the UFC, and, and that's, that's um, unheard of to, 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 to think of this woman, and she's even a better grappler than most of the men in the sport. That's why I'm a fan of hers, because of her grappling ability and what she's able to do. But, you know, like the old tale says, you know what, you could have a Ferrari and it don't got no gas and it ain't gonna go nowhere. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you what, I've seen Holly, she's put the work in for this fight camp, she's in great shape, she's ready to go, and um, I've even done some rounds with her and give her that Ronda Rousey look, and her punches are, are, are crisp, and she's sharp, she's ready. Her, her first two fights in UFC, you know, were kind of like warm-ups for her. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think she's really adapted to, to the limelight of UFC and also just to, to mixed martial arts because, you know, it's been a, it takes about 10 fights to really get adjusted and, and, right. and, 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 and feel comfortable in there. And, and so I think she's ready. I think this is her big opportunity. She's, she's my age. We're, the, we're, we're in our prime right now. Me, Carlos, Holly, Cowboy, we're all in our prime right now as fighters. You know, this is that time where you're just, you have that speed, you have that strength, and you have the wisdom that you've built over the years of, of your experience. Your experiences um, translate into wisdom, translate into experience, and that's what gives you edge when you go into the fight. Not, not only having um, the greatest trainers and the greatest team behind us, it's the experience factor. Right. And I think that Holly definitely has the edge on the experience in the big fights. And I think that this huge fight in Melbourne, they're going to be a, a big stadium full of people. It's going to be huge. And I, I really, truly have a feeling in my heart that Holly's going to bring the UFC belt home. She has to stay away, keep her distance, and, and you know, kind of peck at, peck at Ronda, frustrate her, get her tired. And, and get her into the into the deeper water, and I believe she can drown her. Okay, and, and uh, one more thing. I know you got somewhere to be. We were talking about your weight, and uh, we were talking about uh, Del Norte High School. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> won your first state championship. You're kind of that size, huh? Um, you know, I haven't been this small since since my senior year in high school, and um, yeah, I'm about the same size. It's it's really really crazy the way everything comes full circle, but um, you know what? I'm healthy and I feel good, so I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Okay, and I know I said that was the last thing, but I do have one more. Uh, you made me think of it because you were talking about all of you guys being in your prime, all that synergy in there, all that that all that. We all work together off of that hunger. Um, and, and, you know, it's like we're all hard workers. That's something that I think is, is a New Mexico thing. That's something that I think is an Albuquerque thing. We're hard workers. We work hard, you know, because they always, you know, they always threw us to the dogs. They always tried to, you know, we give us the, the toughest opponents. And, and, and from the very start of our mixed martial arts career, they were always just throwing us to the dogs. And, and we fought back and we worked hard. We brought our high altitude energy and we, we 
came with the desert and we came with the Burke toughness and we have built something from me being the first ultimate fighter to, to now, it's been 10 years, we've built something that is known as being one of the best things in the world and we all work off of each other's energy and um, that, that, that hunger to be the best in the world. We all want that belt. We all want to be champions. We all want to be the hardest worker in the gym and we all feed off of each other. And um, you know, we just have each other's back and, and, and this gym's gonna do good regardless. You know, regardless if we win the belts or not, you know, John Dotson just came up short. You know, but but look, he's going back up to 135, and he's still hungry. He still wants to get the belt. Yeah. He just called out Ricardo uh, um, Thomas Alameda, and he wants to fight that undefeated young guy. And that's how we are at the gym. We don't want the easy fights. We want the hard yeah. fights. And that's why I'm taking Ricardo Lamas number four in the world on right as my first fight at 145. And um, I'm going to show the world what I'm truly capable of, and um, that with Great sacrifice comes great reward, and that's that's what this fight means to me. Great sacrifice, great reward. All right, you heard him, Diego Sanchez. Check him out on UFC Fight Night 78, November 20th, right? November 21st, November 21st. Monterey, Mexico. Monterey, Mexico, Fox Sports 1. Jared Chester behind camera, filling in for Robart Pugsley. We'll see you next time.